Hey guys, Tamago here, and welcome back to the Neopets experience. So, you might notice, some time has passed between the episodes, and Brightlegs is once again dying. Now, back when he was crying after going only 196 hours without eating, I was like, come on man, those are rookie numbers, what you talking about? But now that he's gone 52 days without eating? Well, n now, now he has a right to be upset. I was surprised to see a few messages and friend requests from some of you guys watching, which was pretty nice, so thank you. And after going through those, I figured I should get Bright Legs something to eat. Ah uh, yes, the Braintree branch, worth 10,000 Neo points. Apparently, I could equip it. To do what exactly? I did not know. I had also managed to pick up a piñata at some point. I'm not sure where it came from, but after Bright Legs hit it a couple of times, some treats fell out of it, including food exactly what I was looking for. Brightleg's hunger level then went from dying to famished, and considering I'd already gotten this far without paying for anything, I wanted to see what else I could get for free too. So I headed to the Tyrannian Mountains, home of the giant omelette, and grabbed myself a piece. I tried my luck to see if I could get any more, but this guy said no. Alright then, be that way. Next I made my way over to the movie theatre to get Bright Legs some free popcorn, after which I received a gift from another Neopets user called Big Spider. So shout out to you dude, thank you. I mean it would have been better if it was something edible, but I'll take it. I returned to my inventory to find not only my omelette, but also a slice of crust only pizza, and this left me with two questions. One, where did this come from? And two, why? I wasn't about to complain though, free food is free food, so I fed the slice to Brightlegs along with the omelette which actually allowed for three servings and he was feeling good as ever. So with this hunger dealt with, it was time to get into the games, and the first one up was Cheat. This is a HTML version of the Cheat card game and it's exactly the same, like it's literally just the card game against AI opponents. So this puts me in a bit of an odd situation because I actually quite like the game Cheat, like as a card game, but I don't know if I should give this version a high score since they didn't really create anything, they just copied the rules of the game over. But I also don't have time to be overanalyzing this, so whatever, 6 out of 10. I would like to point out though that I was incredibly close to winning, and then I was caught out on my final card. To say I was pissed would be an understatement. Brightleg's face right now is an accurate representation of how I felt in that moment. Kapara, from here on out, you better sleep with one eye open, because I'ma pull up on you when you least expect it, and crack this diploma case over your head. Next up was Cheese Roller, another HTML... <clears throat> Uh, game where you roll cheese down a hill and see how fast you can make it go. If you manage to reach the bottom in under a minute, you get to keep the cheese. Now the interesting thing about this game is you have to buy the cheese that you're going to roll down the hill beforehand, but rather than just giving you a list of cheeses to buy, you have to search the name of the type of cheese you want to use. They have made this unnecessarily tedious already. So obviously my initial idea was to search for cheeses I already knew about, like cheddar and mozzarella and blue, but none of them came up, so I was wondering what was going on. And this dude was no help at all with his condescending responses. I searched cream cheese, which, I mean, I, I have no idea how that would possibly roll down a hill, unless you kept it in its container, I guess, but this guy was just like, um, no. I took to the in-game search engine for help, but that wasn't any good either. It gave me a bunch of cheesy items, but not any cheese itself. So naturally, the next step was to Google it, and I was back at jellyneo.net, a website I've had to become quite acquainted with in recent times. Well, it turns out, as I should have known, there were in fact special Neopets cheeses, and these were the only ones I could enter the game with. So I chose the cheapest one, of course, and when I purchased it, it occurred to me that the prize for completing the challenge in under a minute was that I would get to keep the cheese that I had just paid for. So you're telling me that despite me lawfully purchasing this cheese, if I was too slow tumbling it down a hill, I wouldn't even get to keep it? I'm telling you, this whole website is a racket. But I was too invested to quit now, so I pushed the cheese down the hill, and the game was... Very disappointing. I mean, I didn't even get to see the cheese roll. It was just a series of descriptions prompted by me choosing one of five options for how to maneuver the cheese. Like, you couldn't have even included a gif in there, you know, just for good measure. I ended up finishing the course in 85 seconds, which was too slow to win the cheese or any neo points. And to rub salt in the wound, my performance was rated as 
pathetic. So you know what, if this game wants to rate me a zero, then I'll rate it a zero. Except my, my ratings don't go below one, so I'll, I'll just rate it a one. But you know what's funny? After all that, I still find myself wondering, could I have done it? had I just bought a more expensive cheese. Up next was Chef Academy. In this game, you need to prepare, cook, and serve up meals for the waiters to take to the hungry customers. It follows the same basic concept as Berry Bash, which I talked about in episode one, but with one major difference. In this game, there are actual challenges to face. For one, you've got to keep track of all your ingredients and order more when you run out. This can either be a free delivery, which will take a few seconds, or an express delivery, which is instant, but costs 20 coins. You also have to make sure not to overcook any of the meals, and to add even more depth, meals that are being served by the same waiter need to be prepared in good timing with each other, or else you risk one of the meals getting cold before the other one is ready. This game is really a challenge, especially in the later levels, although you are given help in the form of the focus meter, which temporarily slows down time. You can also unlock upgrades to your focus meter and meal preparation times every few levels. This is a very good game with great stylizing, sound effects, and music. I'm giving Chef Academy an 8 out of 10. Following that, we have Chemistry for Beginners, and despite that sounding like the title of a school textbook, the game was actually pretty decent. It's a puzzle game where you have to build molecules using the atoms given, but you only have a limited number of atoms available and a target score you need to reach before you run out. There are also unstable molecules, which, if built, will result in a game over. This game was a bit of a slow burn. At first, I wasn't all that into it, but as it went on and I entered the later levels, I started to get it and was spending more time thinking about my moves. It's a nice game, although it would have been better with some sort of backing music or even just simple sound effects, but it's it still got the job done. Chemistry for Beginners gets a 6 out of 10. After that, I played Chia Bomber 2, a top-down grid shooter where you've got to fire water balloons at enemies whilst avoiding being hit yourself. You can also drop mines for enemies to run into. It was a fun game that unfortunately had some obnoxiously loud sound effects, but overall, it's a decent time. 6 out of 10. Then there was Cliffhanger. This is essentially Hangman, but instead of a hanging man, you have this warus looking Neo pet creeping ever closer to the edge of this cliff. I chose the hard difficulty and was given this pretty lengthy phrase to figure out, along with a set of letters I could choose from which didn't include any vowels as well as a few other letters. Once I'd made a few sensible guesses, I was left with this and figured I should open up the old notepad to help me out here. I took an educated guess of the vowels I was missing and was able to work this out, but I was stuck trying to figure out what words came after second. Eventually, I deducted that the second to last word was probably game, but I was still hopeless when it came to the other two. I guessed a few other of the remaining available letters, but those were no help, and now I was only one step away from losing the game. I had to engage all cylinders in my brain, and decided that the last word was probably around, but now was the hardest part, the four letter word for which I had no letters. Turns out this might have actually helped though, since I wrote out all the letters the word could be made of in the notepad file, and after a minute straight of looking at them, the word stuck out to me. Rate. The Wheel of Mediocrity is officially the most second-rate game around. I know, I'm a genius. 5 out of 10. Fairy Cloud Racers and Extreme Fairy Cloud Racers. I put these two together because they are the same game, it's just that the regular version is in 2D against one opponent, and the extreme version is in 3D against three opponents. The games work exactly like Tron. You ride a cloud racer which generates a trail behind you, and anyone that bumps into a trail or the outer walls is eliminated. The regular version, while less exciting than the extreme one, makes for a better gameplay experience. It's much easier to see what you're doing with the top-down view, and although the extreme version does have a minimap in the corner, it's much tougher to see things coming and prepare for them. Especially since controlling the racer in 3D creates the most janky visual experience of any game I've played on this site so far. Extra points to the regular version for having a two-player mode too, although I get why that wouldn't quite work in the 3D edition. I'm giving Fairy Cloud Racers a 5 out of 10, and Extreme Fairy Cloud Racers a 3 out of 10. After those, I played Cloud Raiders. 
not not races, raiders. In this game, you have to navigate this flying ship around obstacles by drawing air currents for the ship to follow. You have no control over the ship itself, only the air currents, and while it might sound like a decent idea, in practice, it wasn't all that great. 3 out of 10. It was at this point I had to ask myself, was man really intended to play this many different Neopets games in one sitting? I could feel my mind slowly deteriorating with each new game, but I continued nonetheless. Cold War Tactics. This game is Battleship. Like it's... it's the exact same game. But it's actually really well done. I knew it was going to be good when it opened in a whole other window. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Battleship, then the basic gist of this game is you have minecarts of varying lengths and you get to choose where you place them on a grid. You and your opponent then take it in turns to target specific spaces on the other player's grid in the hopes of hitting a section of one of their minecarts. The player who manages to completely destroy the other player's entire set wins the game. I was impressed with this one. It's got great artwork and animations, the music is good, the gameplay works well, and all in all it's just a very good time. This is a quality game, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Of course, it's only right to follow up a game this good with absolute garbage. This is Coconut Shy, okay? This is the whole game. You pay 100 Neo points, right? You do this. This guy goes... <laughs> and you win back 50 Neo points. If you manage to nearly knock the coconut down, you'll win 300 Neo points, but I don't know what the chances of that happening are, and I'm not willing to spend Neo points to find out. This game is straight trash. 1 out of 10. Cootie Wars. This is a game where you have to shoot out the bugs parachutes before they reach the ground. The longer you wait to shoot them, the more points you get, but if you wait too long, then they'll escape, and if you lose too many of them, it's game over. This game reminded me of Carnival of Terror from the last episode, but I preferred this one because of the more complex gameplay, along with the better sound effects and art. I'm giving Cootie Wars a 7 out of 10. Cork Gun Gallery. Oh look, another deserted fairground game that's barely a game, but also isn't just completely up to chance and so it's not quite disqualified. Speaking of which, we haven't had a single disqualified game all episode, what's going on? In Cork Gun Gallery, you pay 100 Neo points to shoot the cork gun at an item, and if you knock it down, you get to keep it. I shot at a box of cereal, it fell down, and after a few seconds of waiting and literally nothing happening, I decided to check my inventory, and lo and behold, it was there. 2 out of 10. Crisis Courier. Now, this one brought back memories. In this game, you control this thing called a UU with your mouse, and you have to avoid bumping into the buildings. You can switch between the fire and snow UU to take out the different types of enemies, and there are also special fruits you can pick up which give you power ups. This is a good game that provides quite the challenge and quite a bit of fun. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 a score which may or may not be influenced by nostalgia. Darblat. This one also brought back memories, but not good ones. The objective is very simple. All you have to do is shoot the Darblat with your snow cannon as he slides down the mountain. Problem is, you don't know when he's going to come, and by the time he's come, he's already gone. This is a game of fast reactions, and I'll admit, I tried very many times without any success, but this time, THIS TIME was gonna be the one. Wait, what? That was pin point precision. How did that not hit? You know what? Forget this game. One out of ten. Next up was Deck Ball. Okay, that was, that was that was actually too harsh. Two out of ten. Next up was Deck Ball, a 3D football game where. I mean, I mean, just look at it, bro. Like, what the flip? In the very least, it was somewhat charming, although it was quite annoying how it felt like you were playing on wet ice with how the characters slid all over the place. I have nothing more to say about this one. 3 out of 10. I tried out the next game, Defenders of Neopia, and it's essentially a story mode for the Battle Dome, complete with comics. So, a nice idea, but ultimately, it's disqualified. <sighs> I was wondering when that was going to happen. Following Defenders of Neopia was Defender Trainer, a game where you test out your Neopets knowledge, but really it's only testing if you know what letter the different species and items on the site begin with. The game gave me 3 lives, 
I gave the game a 3 out of 10. By this point, I had gone through 18 games in one sitting, and my brain was pretty much mush, but for some reason, I was determined to make it to 20. The Great Desert Race. This is a board game where you roll a die and then you move forward a number of steps equal to the number that appeared. On you know how you know how board games work. And there are obstacles and items and traps and the first person to reach the end wins. It was just a board game, nothing particularly interesting about it. Although I will point out that this is the first game I've seen so far which allows for up to four players. So that's cool, I'm giving the Great Desert Race a 4 out of 10. And that brings me to the last game, Deserted Fairground. Scratch cards, are you kidding me? The last game of the episode is a freaking scratch card? That costs 1200 Neo points. I told, I said this website was a racket. Man, whatever, I bought the card, scratched off six squares, won absolutely nothing, disqualified the game, and doubled down on my conviction that deserted fairground games are the worst games. And that's gonna be it for this episode. A lot of low scoring games this time around, and honestly, I gotta tell you, there is no way that playing this many games in one sitting can be good for your health but this website just has too many games. I don't know how much longer I can do this for. Send help, please.